स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Hello all welcome to our course on precision oncology that today we will be dealing about the basics of molecular biology of cancer here we will be talking about what exactly is precision oncology why why, why is the term a complete word precise so because the cancer the cancer treatment is now not like a fit for all size it is each for individual treatment the diagnosis is based on the tumor signatures or the dna signatures of that particular tumor so it is earlier the class uh, cancers were classified based on the type of a tissue a body of a body in which they arose such as the lung cancer the brain the glioma's the breast colon pancreas and so on and so forth but now there is a complete radical change is that is happening where you know the the uh, cancer treatment is or the cancer is classified at the molecular level so so this is a completely a new perspective which is a, which is coming up in the existing cancer research and this is called precise precision oncology is precisely in which doctors are choosing treatments based on the dna signature or the mutations of that particular individual tumor so so using advanced technology to adv- to analyze both tumors as well as the blood samples from a large number of patients is what is exactly a pre- precision oncology so this te- technology is useful uh, this uh, throughout this course we will be talking about the different screening methodologies different precise detection methodologies and diff- and not only this detection a targeted therapy therapeutics offered for the different cancers and we will also be talking in detail about the immunotherapy and the CAR T therapy for today's session we will be talking about the basics or the molecular or basics molecular biology of cancer so we will be in briefly touching about what exactly is a proto oncogene and what it drives to become a or to it transform it to an oncogene which will lead to the progression of cancer and we will also be talking about the tumor suppressor genes we will be giving some cl- basic examples of the proto oncogenes your ras proteins and the tumor suppressor genes we will be talking about your p50 and the retino p53 and the retinoblast from of protein okay so and towards the end of this session we will be really in understanding what exactly drives the uh, transform what exactly leads to the initiation of a cancer or the uncontrolled uncontrolled growth of cells so here we will see what is the genomic and histological steps required for uh, for the tumor progression if you would really understand that there is always a steady state of progress steady state number of cells or a steady state pro- progression is required to maintain the cell number homeostasis now cell numbers proliferation is influenced by the pa- balance of the positive effects of oncogenes and the negative effects of the tumor suppressor genes the cell death is also influenced by the balance of your Uh, positive and the negative effects of the pro apoptotic and anti apoptotic gene products so the cell number may be increased maybe by the increased in activity of your oncogenes or by decreased or the loss of activity of the tumor suppressor genes or the pro apoptotic genes this this is a very well clearly established fact from before so now if you can really if we can really know the occurrence of the initiating uh, mutation in the founder cell to what can it take, how can how does it lead to the mechanistic action or for the, uh, for a uh, uh, for the metastasis formation the genomic landscape of the tumors is very very important that requires that if you uh, that many of the genetic accumulation of many of the genetic changes has to happen okay so the and if we can really notice here there are the suppose you have a normal epithelium then to, and then to a dysplastic acf then an early uh, 
uh, adenoma to an intermediate adenoma. So, if we can really see there are so many molecular events across over this happening in this particular tumor. So, so here also you have the intestin intestinal uh, epithelial crypts, then the which you have the aberrant and crypt focus, then this is the adenocarcinoma and the carcinoma. So, beyond for this and, and typically for a solid tumor for the whole transformation from a normal epithelium to a carcinoma to a metastasis it would approximately take to 10 to 30 years and which it offers a window period for the early detection of cancers. So, multiple members of the protein kinase family have been already been, been related to tumorogenesis. Several of uh, so, this uh, so the mutational analysis of all the uh, tyrosine kinase domains, um, especially this is the particular case of your colorectal uh, cancer, they all have revealed that 30 percent of these tumors have mutation in at least one of these particular tyrosine kinases, and many mutations are identified in several of the uh, kinase family genes. So, here we will be coming about to the cancer genes. So, we have discussed, we have really known that now it is an established fact that cancer genes, the genes are responsible for the, for the progression of a cancer and cancer is definitely a genetic disease. Cancer genes are broadly grouped into the oncogenes and the tumor suppressor genes. Okay, so usually uh, using a classic analogy, uh, if we can really compare an oncogene, so like to your uh, brake, uh, an accelerator in the car, okay, so that the mutation in an oncogene would be equivalent of having the accelerator when it is continuously pressed. So, there is continuous replication, so there is no stop signal given. So, as such, the cells will continue to, rep uh, to replicate. So, mutations, uh, mutations in, the, in these oncogenes typically occur at a specific hot spots. So, you have something called, so for example, in the EGFR mutation, you have the exon 19 deletion, which could be a hot spot mutation. So, which are, uh, which often occur uh, affecting the same codon or clustered in this close by neighboring co codons and in different tumors. So, mostly of some of these mutations are usually missense that is a single base pair a difference in a single base pair mutations that usually affect only one allele this is therefore making them heterozygous. So, this is very very important this particular example. So, where the normal genes which are regulate which uh, regulate the cell growth and they if there is there is no mutation they the whole there will be no drive towards cancer progression whereas if there is a single mutation it leads to the accelerated cell division as a result the proto oncogene will be converted to oncogene and this will lead to the initiation of cancers. So, in, in contrast tumor suppressor genes are usually mutated throughout the gene. So, the number of mutations may truncate the encoded protein and generally which affect both alleles causing the, both alleles which cause loss of heterozygosity. So, as mentioned, so you a broken break uh, which will lead to a defective uh, tumor suppressors which will fail to restrict your cell cycle. So, tumor suppressor genes are those that are normal genes that slow down cell division or tell cells to stop at the to stop division at the type, uh, right time. So, this process is termed as apoptosis or programmed cell death. So, they in tumors and suppressor genes act as breaks so that when they are not mutated they function to inhibit the tumorogenesis or the uncontrolled cell division. So, when tumor uh, suppressor genes do not work properly cells can go out of can control which can lead to cancer. Here we can have a uh, clearly see how the normal gene where the tumor suppressor gene where it is not able to go progress towards cancer whereas here the first you have a first mutation and still and it is an st where the tumor suppressor gene is mutated to become an active oncogene and then following which the second mutation or uh, uh, and it will lead to the complete 
no breaks where you don't have any more unrestricted control uh, control control on the particular cell division process and thereby leads and it becomes uh, on the more active and the active tumor suppressor gene is con coming to an active oncogene and as such there is uh, uh, the whole cell uh, to, uh, the whole division drives towards the progression of ca cancer so major systematic mutations present in the malignant uh, tumors uh, so what exactly can they drive towards the Ca cancer such as your major types of somatic mutations such as the nucleotide substitution, small insertions and deletions, chromosome, uh, and re chromosomal rearrangements and copy number alterations can drive the, uh, the tumor suppressor genes to an active oncogene. So, we have critical cancer critical genes which fall into two categories basically the recessive and the dominant. So, what happens here uh, in a dominant manner where a gain of function, so a gain of function mutation in a single copy of the cancer gene can drive the cell towards cancer. So, tumor suppressor genes on the other hand generally act in a recessive manner where there should be the loss of the where the function of both the alleles, alleles of this particular uh, cancer critical gene must be lost to drive a cancer towards cancer. In this particular diagram, activated mutations are, uh, are represented by solid red boxes and inactivated mutations are represented by hollow boxes, uh, boxes as we can see here. So, here what happens is uh, oncogenes act in a dominant manner, a gain of a function mutation in a single copy of the cancer critical gene that can drive towards the cancer. Whereas, mutations in the tumor suppressor gene on the other hand generally act in a recessive manner. So, the function of both the alleles of the cancer critical gene must be lost to drive a cancer cell to, to, to drive a cell towards cancer. So, all the all so, this is a very well example. So, here you can see activating mutation enables the oncogene to stimulate cell proliferation. Whereas, here two inactivated mutations functionally eliminate the tumor suppressor gene which will stimulate the cell progression. So, here this is an example an oncogene is an example for a proto-oncogene. Uh, it is an example of overactivity mutation is called a gain of function and an underactivity mutation is called a loss of mutation. So, in either both the cases the cells that pro cells proliferate abnormally thereby leading to progression of cancer. So, here we will be giving up another uh, examples of a driver and passenger mutations. So, by the time a cancer is diagnosed, it is composed of several, uh, uh, the whole tissue is composed of several billions of cells carrying DNA abnormalities, some of have which have a functional role in malignant proliferation. However, many genetic lesions acquired along the way may not have a functional role in the complete tumorogenesis. So, there is an emerging landscape of cancer gen genomic genomes which include thousands of genes that could not be previously linked to tumor uh, tumorogenesis, but they could be somatically mutated. So, many of these genes can be like they are called passenger genes or passenger mutations or neutral in that they have no functional effect on the growth of the tumor. So, only for a small fraction of the genetic changes, okay, genetic change alterations are expected to drive the cancer evolution by giving cells a selective advantage over the neighbors. So, only a small mutation, a small number of mutations in the particular cancer cells can, can lead to the whole transfer, whole progression of the cancer cells towards the tumorogenesis. So, pa passenger mutations occur incidentally in the cell that later on in parallel develop a driver mutation, but are not ultimately pathogenic. Okay, although pa these passenger mutations are neutral, cataloging, uh, cataloging them or identifying them is important because they, they uh, harbor the 
as important signature of the previous exposure of the cancer cell uh, underwent as a result of the DNA damage repair or any other uh, abnormal events. So, in many cases, uh, so, so as we are all aware, cancer develops as a result of accumulation of somatic and other genetic alterations. So, that impair your cell division or it may even bypass the checkpoints and then which will really lead to abnormal cell proliferation and tumor genesis. So, such mutations are called driver mutation which is by they are the positive selection factors. So, they and we have already discussed what exactly this particular passengers uh, mutations are. They really do not promote the growth of the cancer but uh, or may not have any effect on the cell. So, always passenger mutations tag along with the uh, driver mutations. So, they are a consequence of simple cell division. The challenge in, in, in the cancer research of a precision oncology or for any of the molecular oncologists is to distinguish the consequential uh, driver mutations from the inconsequential passenger mutations. For example, in the lung cancer, EGFR mutations is a very well laid out driver mutation. So, same in your KRAS mutations in the colon cancer. So, there are like sometimes we definitely certain mutations are always uh, associated with the particular cancer. For example, BRCA for the breast cancer. So, it is very, very important to identify the driver mutations for each cancer subtype. Okay, this is a simple example for uh, transfection for detection of your uh, oncogene. So, you would have a chemically transformed mice fibroblast. So, where and then the DNA is extracted and then to detect an oncogene in this DNA, DNA is extracted from the tumor cells, broken into fragments and introduced into this particular fibroblast. And then if any of the fragments contains an oncogene, small colonies of abnormally uh, proliferating so called transformed cells may may be seen here. So, they may begin to appear. Each of these colonies will be composed of a clone of cells that have originated from single cell whose growth was promoted by the added gene. So, because they have been released by some of the social controls on cell, cell uh, division, the transformed cells usually outgrow the normal cells piling up in layers and uh, in the culture dish. The normal mouse cell is in, is transformed and it will form uh, uh, colonies uh, which are where and a clonal population of cells. So, when we inject this particular transformed cells into the mice, this the injection of the morphologically uh, uh, in, uh, transformed cells into the mouse host will give rise to the tumor. So, thereby saying that this particular uh, DNA or there is a proto-oncogene in this particular DNA. So, this is a method to identify proto-oncogenes. So, what exactly are uh, oncogenes? So, based on the roles, uh, the different roles in the proliferation pathway, oncogenes are those that initiate signaling at the cell surface. Example, the growth receptors, the growth factor receptors and those so, oncogenes are also those that are part of the intracellular signal transduction pathways and oncogenes are those that function at the level of nuclear level. Here in this particular table, we can clearly see what are the different growth factors, the growth factor receptors such as the HER2, the RED and then the, the G proteins, the membrane browns, they are HRAS, KRAS, NRAS which we will be talking in detail now and then the phosphokinases. So, the transcription factors, the MYC, which these are all important uh, oncogenes which can be transformed upon a single base pair mutation into a proto-oncogene. Usually, a proto-oncogene can be converted to an oncogene in the three different mechanisms such as a deletion or pawn mutation in a coding sequence or a gene amplification or a chromosome rearrangement. So, here we can see from 
uh, if there is a point mutation in the sequ sequence of this in the coding sequence there is an hypocrat a hypo hyperactive protein which is made in normal amounts the similarly a normal protein if there is a gene amplification where you have multiple copies of the gene there is a normal protein but which is produced in much larger overproduced over expression and a chromosome rearrangements which where a nearby regulatory dna sequences causes a normal protein to be to be overproduced or you can have a fusion that is a translocate or a fusions transfusions to actively transcribed gene greatly overproduces fusion protein a fusion protein is much more hyperactive than the normal protein so this is a different ways how, three different ways how a proto oncogene is completely activated so uh, such as the so it can be here it can be even a a uh, uh, missense mutation or a um, um, partial deletion or by chromosomal translocation so this change these changes can occur in the protein protein region so as to uh, to yield a hyperactive product or they can occur in adjacent control genes so that the gene is similarly expressed at onco at concentrations that are much higher than normal so the cancer critical genes may be overexpressed because of extra copies are present as we can clearly see or due to the gene amplifications caused by uh, this and this could be uh, happening because of your errors in dna replication so what are the exactly the activation mechanism of proto oncogenes chromosomal translocation of a proto oncogene that's for the example of mec so a prime mutation of a proto oncogene as i mentioned before where a substitution of a single base by another base is happening for example a point mutation at the codon 12 of your ras oncogene a gene amplification that again it happens in mic c mic in the neuroblastoma and the last example what you have seen in the last part of the figure to the extreme right side it is that the gene that promotes a transcription uh, transcription near the proto oncogene which results in the over expression of the genes uh, okay so the retrovirus uh, carcinogenicity examples so tra chromosomal translocation of a proto oncogene from a location that cannot be transcribed to an adjacent location a example the mic oncogene in the human burkitt's lymph lymphoma is a class so they so there are the different mix okay so they all are like so they are uh, they, this family is encoded by cellular proto oncogenes these proteins originate from genes based on the different chromosomes so constituent of the mic are the first ex uh, exon non coding for protein and the protein encoding third exon so there this is a where there is a definitely an activation mechanism of proto oncogenes which is totally not in place during the progression of tumorigenesis here we will totally see how proto oncogene uh, oncogene activation to form form uh, oncogenes may occur as a result of gene act amplification point mutation or chromosomal translocation as i mentioned before so erb2g oncogene is an example of a gene amplification and it's totally reported in breast lung and oral cancers so the ras family h ras k ras are mutation dependent oncogenes have been reported in the many of the cancers such as the pancreatic and colon cancers the burkitt lymphoma and the chronic myelogenous and exa are examples of associated with the Tra translocation so here we can see that it's a proto oncogene here a point mutation which which is converted into an oncogene and then uh, as i mentioned before there is many many copies of the many gene which is the uh, amplification and the translocation is happening so usually normal cell proliferation follows a sequence of events that starts with the binding of a growth factor to its specific receptor on the cell membrane we are all aware of this so this activation of this growth factor receptor leads to the activation of the signal transduction proteins on the inside of the cell membrane followed by the transduction of this transduced stringer to the to through the cytosol to the nucleus by the secondary messengers so this is a very well orchestrated event even a single mutation or an extra gene amplification could totally lead to a, a complete excess amplification of the uh, signal much more signal which will give which will continuously activate the 
the cells to replicate thereby leading to the tumorigenesis. MYC regulates, we will be talking about another oncogene here or MYC which is a very very important protein which regulates the spectrum of cellular uh, ce cellular functions in normal cells. It uh, MYC protein acts in the nucleus as a signal for cell proliferation. MYC regulates a number of protein coding or non-coding genes that are involved in distinct cellular functions so, which include the cell cycle, protein biogenesis, cell addition, metabolism, signal transcription, transcription and translation and among this. So, excess quantities of cell, make what can happen can lead to cell uh, to lead, can cause the cell to uh, proliferate in circumstances much beyond its capacity when in a normal uh, cell that the excess replication would not happen. So, there is something called the MYC, uh, MYC has a cell. So, expression of MYC family members is tightly controlled. So, here we can see is it is uh, excess MYC expression can be induced upon retroviolet promoter insertions or by chromosomal translocations amplification and activation of the super enhancers within the MYC gene and or mutations of the upstream signaling pathway that enhance the MYC stability. So, for example, in the Burkitt's, uh, Burkitt's lymphoma, what happens is a translocation of the MYC gene under the control of sequences that normally drive the expression of antibodies in B cells is happening. Uh, what happens as a result, there is a mutant B cells and which, uh, which, prote which proliferate in excess to form a tumor. So, similar chromosome translocations are also happening in lymphomas and le leukemias. So, here we get this typical diagram shows how importantly is MYC is import playing a role in the transcription, biosynthesis, microRNA, cell addition, cytoskeleton, DNA repair, translation, metabolism, cell cycle and signal transduction. Another one more important proto-oncogene which we are going to study is the, the RAS genes. So, usually the, the three RAS genes, the Yokeras and RAS, RAS are they encode for uh, a 188 to 189 amino acid and then they share about a 90 percent sequence uh, homology among themselves. So, KRAS and uh, encodes two splice variants due to alternative uh, exon 4 utilization leading to divergent C terminal sequences. So, this particular KRAS, NRAS, uh, HRAS, they are uh, actively mutated in one third of all human cancers and they act as the prototypic oncogenes. So, they are rather, uh, they, they, in, they are rather distinct pattern, patterns to RAS mutations. So, the isoform uh, mutated as well as the position and the type of substitution, they all vary between different, different cancers. So, it is it's very, very important as RAS genes are uh, among the earliest if not the first mutated genes in a variety of cancers. You have the colon cancers where the RAS is mutated, the, the thyroid, then you have the pancreatic cancers. So, how these, meta, uh, how these mutations are happening in each particular cancer, it not only uh, helps us to conclude how these cancers begin, but also what are the factors that influence this particular uh, event It's in, and then how, what uh, and how can it have implications for the cancer prevention? Uh, quickly, RAS is a protein, uh, the RAS is a RAS related protein, a small GTP binding protein with structural similarity. So, RAS transforming proteins are bestowed by a gain of function mutations. So, please recollect what we have just discussed in the previous slide. So, RAS related genes encoding mini GTP binding proteins fall into several subcategories characterized by their uh, amino acid sequences of the encoded proteins and their biological functions such as they are called as the RASP, RAS, RHO, RAP and the RAS. So, the RAS related protein superfamily of small GTP binding proteins is uh, uh, described by the suppose G domain which is very very distinct to its superfamily and and plays mostly regulatory functions in all the cellular protein. In this particular diagram, we will see how RAS is a GDP-GDP binding 
binary switch. We can clearly see that RAS is a GTP binding in its active state, whereas in its inactive states, it's a RAS GDP is inactive. So, how the, the, with the presence uh, from this, uh, from after the uh, the RAS GTP activates a particular kinase, it will uh, in by the process it will be uh, cut into an inactive state, and it is where a G, GAP and a phosphate is released. And whenever upon the signal required signal, the uh, and by the molecular switch again, this inactive uh, uh, RAS GDP can convert into an active RAS GDP, and it will influence the effectors. So the conversion from the GTP to the GDP bound form is mediated by the intrinsic GTPs activity of RAS. And its a reaction is accelerated by the activity of the GTPs activating protein. That is this particular protein. So this is very very important reaction for all the uh, many many of the kinase proteins and especially with this RAS RAS protein. This will affect the the active uh, RAS GTP will affect the effectors but that is by binding to the substrates of the different and so, so, down, the downstream signaling pathways. So, if this mutated RAS GTP if it is in continuous it is getting a continuous stimulus on this effectors which will have influence on the cell cycle or the cell proliferation the RAS it will lead to the progression of tumor. So, the, the G domain is also called the switch 1 region. It undergoes transformational changes during conversion of the GDP bound state into a GTP state as I mentioned before. So, it is it, the RAS constitutes a class of phosphate binding uh, loop proteins that work as molecular switches between the GDP bound inactive and the GTP bound active stages. So, this is a very very important protein for this particular RAS oncoprotein. So, what are the different RAS isoforms and what is the mechanism of signaling? The RAS family consists of small GTPs which comprises of three genes in human that is the HRAS, NRAS and the KRAS as we can see here. Uh, that encode the four, four proteins HRAS, NRAS, KRAS, 4, 4A and the KRAS 4B. So, what happens is, so these are these two have arised from the alternative splicing. So, an, uh, the, anal, the anali, alignment of the carboxy terminal of this particular four different isoforms of RAS is particularly shown here. So, here this particular uh, diagram shows the RAS signaling of the, in normal cells uh, where the RAS, prim, prim, RAS proteins primarily reside in the towards the cytosolic side of the plasma membrane by way of tethering of specific lipid moieties attached to the carboxy terminal here as we can see. Upon activation of this particular receptors, uh, receptor tyrosine kinases for example here the what we have shown here is the EGFR, the RAS, the RAS GEFs are recruited to the plasma membrane and promote exchange of the GDP for GDP on RAS generating an active GDP bound RAS. So, this is an RAS GAP and here as I have shown before where, so here this particular signal is on, it is on. So, uh, GTP is activating uh, proteins what we have shown before gaps accelerate the GTP is activity of RAS returning RAS to the inactivate from. So, here we can see that what I have shown before we can clearly see how it is the this is on and this is off. So, now what exactly happens here in the in the scenario of the ca cancer the oncogenic, oncogenic mutations in RAS protein render the uh, RAS proteins render the protein more active such that it chronically binds to and activates multiple downstream effects. So, this is completely bound so because of this particular mutations or in the particular cancer so, this is completely, so you cannot have, so it is off here, whereas it is continuously on in a typical uh, cancer uh, scenario and it activates multiple downstream process. Here we can clearly see how this particular mutation is affecting the complete, uh, complete uh, downstream process effect, uh, it binds and activates multiple uh, downstream processes. RAS mutations are well studied in 
pediatric pancreatic ductal adenocarcinomas where the normal 90% of the KRAS mutations happen where the normal epithelium is transformed into a completely the the pediac which leads to the invasive metabolism uh, invasive metastasis pancreatic cancer progression and gene er er mutations multiple tumor types arise from the exocrine uh, pancreas uh, pancreas of which greater than 95 percent are the pediac cancers activating point so you have the point mutation here which occur early and inactivation of this particular uh, p16 in 4a gene occurs at the intermediate stage and the inactivation of the tp53 uh, smad dpc4 and BRCA genes occurs relatively late so oncogenes are in indicated so indicated in green and the tumor suppressor genes are indicated in red here so this is a very very important here the, this is the oncogene and this is the tumor suppressor gene whatever uh, this is a very important classical example of how the oncogenes can have an effect on the progression of the cancer from transforming a simple normal epi epi epithelium to an uh, invasive uh, metastasis cancer. So now we have clearly discussed what exactly are the proto-oncogenes. So we know that uh, there are two major classes of genes which cause cancer, uh, causing cancer such as the oncogenes and the tumor uh, suppressor genes. So oncogenes very well established fact that they have to be activated to cause cancer. Whereas TSGs or tumor suppressor genes which normally hold mitosis in check, they must be inactivated or removed to uh, eliminate control of the cell, uh, cell cycle and initiate cancer. So uh, oncogenes, again to stress upon, they are no, they are, that are genes that normally activate during cell division in specific scenarios. Oncogene activation at wrong place or time during cell, cell division may lead to a cancer. Oncogenes are not something which are totally foreign or alien to the cell. They are normal, they are essential genes that have undergone a mutation. It could be as mentioned before a single point mutation or a, a single base pair mismatch. Okay, So in this normal, uh, normal non-mutated gene, it is called an oncogene is called a proto-oncogene, a gene that can be transformed into an oncogene. So here that is, so uh, the activation of a proto-oncogene to an oncogene is achieved by different mechanisms like the promoter or enhancer in her insertion, chromosomal translocations, gene amplifications and point mutations. Tumor suppressor genes as, as you know as the term indicates it prevents or suppresses tumor formation by regulating cell emission. They are recognized as the key players during the genesis of cancer. Malfunctioning of the tumor suppressor genes may lead to uncontrolled cell division. Uh, researchers have, have, have identified many tumor suppressor genes. Important among them include your P53 and the uh, RB gene. So they, the P53, uh, they are the nuclear uh, phosphoproteins uh, which possibly affect the transcription of genes involved in the regulating the events in the cell cycle. A tumor suppressor gene is a gene that reduces the probability of a cell in a, a multicellular organism. It can it can reduce that. How can it will reduce the probability of the cell to transform into a cancer cells? So it is if you have a mutated or an uh, inactivated tumor suppressor gene, it is damaged to both genes, which will lead to cancer. So these mutations are not sometimes may be acquired or they may not or they are not inherent. Acquired changes in genes are highly contribute to the uh, evolution of the sporadic cancers. So these cells they can uh, grow un uh, uncontrolled and develop cancer. So we have a typical scenario how a normal cell and a cancer cell with an mutated or inactivated uh, tumor gene is represented here.
Tumor suppressor genes are considered as another kind of crucial genes which are involved in here in the DNA repair, the growth factors signaling, the pro-growth metabolic state, neoangiogenesis, epigenetic regulation, senesis or apoptosis. So, TSGs are considered another kind of crucial genes which are involved in all the very vital functions of the cell. So, they act like a brake pedal. That is, they will also, you have a growth factor, a receptor and you have the different tumor suppressor gene and this signaling uh, gene protein which will stop the signals here and then thereby will restrict the uh, growth of in a normal scenario. Whereas, if there is a particular mutation in this particular gene, there will be continuous signaling to this particular receptors which will influence the downstride down signaling cascade pathways that will lead to unreplicated growth of the cells. So, tumor suppressor genes are broadly classified into intracellular proteins that control progression into a specific stage of cell cycle that is your our uh, retinoblastoma protein and the P16. Genes encoding receptors or signal tra transducers or secretory hormones or developmental genes that inhibit cell replication are also the TSGs, tumor signaling. Uh, uh, tumor suppressor genes and genes encoding some uh, some uh, checkpoint control proteins that trigger cell cycle arrest in a response to DNA damage. So, the wherever the, such as your, uh, the breast cancer type 1 susceptibility protein that is your B, BRCA14, P16 and P14. So, genes encoding proteins that induce your apoptosis example P53 and Genes encoding involved in repairing mistakes in DNA, they are also part of the uh, tumor suppressor gene. So, so it is very, very important that the attenuation and expression of the uh, CDK inhibitors such as your P, P16, P27, P53 have been associated with a wide range of transfers from lung to head to breast, neck and pancreas cancers as well as melanoma. So, the, the most important tumor suppressor gene is illustrated in this table. They are the P53, the retinoblastoma, the, the Williams tumor, the BRCA1, BRCA2, the adenomatosis poly, polyopsis colon gene, the DCC and an NF1. So, these genes as with oncogenes, the presence of a single abnormal tumor suppressor allele is sufficient for a cancer to develop. So, lesions and other genetic lesions are also necessary. For example, both RB and P53 have to be inactivated for some normal cells to be rendered immortal. So, the DNA tumor virus, the DNA hep human papilloma virus that is a very causative agent in the cervical cancer, mm, cancer uh, it inhibits both these critical proteins through binding with the in a, through binding with an inactivation of the HPV viral E6 and the E7. In this uh, such, in this manner, the HPV bio, bio, uh, biochemically achieves the same outcome as the cancerous. So, we will see that in detail in the coming slide. So, this is a very uh, famous uh, P53 TSG. It is like the uh, retinoblastoma gene. It is a tumor suppressor gene. Its activity stops uh, the formation of tumors and if a for, for if any one person inherits one copy of the p53 gene from their parents they are they are uh, one functional copy of their parents they could be predisposed to cancer and usually develop several individual uh, independent independent tumors in a variety of tissues in early adulthood so but this condition is rare and it is known as uh, leaf romani syndrome However, many of the tumors have the harbor the P53 uh, mutations. So, the structure of this one is the P53 is a core domain light blue and it is bound to the uh, to the dark blue DNA. So, so this is and this is the most frequent mutations which is shown which we have shown in yellow. This diagram typically depicts the overview of a P53 activation regulation and transcriptional cellular process. 
So P53 gene, like the RB gene, retinoblastoma gene, its activity stops the formation of tumors. If a person, as I mentioned before, inhibits only one functional copy of the P53 from their parents, they could be predisposed to cancers as, as like in the uh, leaf romani syndrome. However, mutations of this P53 are mostly found in many tumor types. The P53 is, uh, gene has been mapped to chromosome 17. So, what happens in the cell is the P53 gene uh, protein binds to DNA which in turn uh, uh, stimulates another gene to produce a protein called P21 that interacts with the cell division CDK2 which when P21 is complexed with this particular CDK2, the cell cannot pass through the next stage of the cell division. So, mutant P53 can no longer bind DNA in an effective way and as the, and as the result, this particular P21 protein is not made able to act as a stop signal for cell division. So, thus, cells can divide uncontrollably to form tumors. So, many many cellular stresses such as the, the DNA damage, the, uh, the oncogene activation and the uh, cell cycle arrays, the replication, translocation steps uh, activate the sensor proteins, ATMs, the ATR, CHK1, CHK2, the DNA, PK and P14, ARF. These kinases phosphorylate P53 leading to its stabilization, oligomerization and binding to the P53 RE. P53 stability is mainly regulated by the MMD, sorry, the MDM2 which is also P53 target thus forming a P53 negative feedback loop. Further modi protein modifications, modifiers and cofactors that uh, bind to the P53 protein regulate the transcriptional activity of its target gene. Thus, the multi-step process of P53 activation ultimately leads, regulates the stress input of the appropriate biological response outcome. Many types of danger signals such as the cell stress, the cell damage, the aberrant growth, so, uh, hypoxia, nucleotide uh, depletion can activate P53 and trigger several crucial cellular responses that suppress the tumor formation. Upstream activators include your radiation uh, or carcinogen induction uh, or uh, induced DNA damage or oncogenic activation, hypoxia, low ribocrinoclate, this condition may in these conditions may nurture the tumor in, in, in initiation. So, what does it happen in that case? The DNA repair, apoptosis, inhibition of the uh, uh, angiogenesis. So, the, all this, this is all the downstream effects of the P P53 3 are uh, affected. So, the ability to cause the cell cycle to to pause allows for the repair of the mild DNA damage. More severe damage, uh, DNA damage induces irreversible cell cycle where rest called senescence. Under certain conditions, pre P53 may play a pro-oxidant role that may contribute to the cellular effect of the apoptosis. So, it should be mentioned that P53 may play a very important role in regulating metabolism. Now, coming to the molecular, upstream molecular pathways of me mechanism. So, the mechanism depends on the nature of the stel stress division. So, they usually three, uh, the upstream activators of the P53 usually utilize three different independent molecular pathways to signal cellular distress such as the DNA damage, the oncogene activation and the cell, the cell drifts. The first kinase ATM here as we can see a texture telangiectasia mutated gene product it's stimulated by the DNA double stranded breaks, phosphorylates and activates the CHK2 kinase which phosphorylates amino, amino terminal of the P53 here as we can see here which is an active state and this phosphorylation interferes with binding of the MDM2 
a second molecular pathway that signals the that signals cellular distress of p53 to p53 is executed by two different kinases atr and the casein kinase 2 so these also phosphorylate the p53 and disrupt its interaction with mdm2 so mdm2 complex lastly activated oncogenes such as the ras induce the activity of the protein uh, p14 arf moly, another moly modulator of the p53 mdr2 complex uh, complex so so the, as a result of this so they the, the stress is sensed by cellular proteins many of this which are kinases that convey the danger signals to p53 via phosphorylation so active p53 has been will always be continued to be active so all three all three all of these three pathways they will be pre prevent degradation of the p p53 by the mdm2 now what exactly are the downstream effect of the uh, effects of the p53 the main mechanism by p by which p53 exerts its tumor suppressing effects is by inducing the uh, expression of its specific target genes as i mentioned before so inhibition of the cell cycle so it it uh, one of the central functions of the p53 is to uh, cause either transient cell cycle uh, arrest or complete senescence in response to the dna damage prior to the next round of replication or a complete resi resistant to cell side division respectively thus damage dna will be prevented from being replicated thereby and passed on to the uh, passed on to da daughter cells so as a result the integrity of the dna or the genome is maintained so this really plays a very very important role here the molecular mechanisms responsible for the cellular uh, response involve the transcriptional induction of the uh, p21 gene as i mentioned so its product the, which is the p21 protein inhibits several cyclin cdk com complexes and it causes the p53 exerts many of its effects by regulating the target genes so how does it do it's here like right? the mechanism the molecular mechanism responsible for the uh, cellular response which involves the transcription uh, transcriptional induction of the p21 gene its product the p21 protein inhibits several cyclin cdk complexes and cause a pause in the uh, from the uh, during the cell cycle that is from the g1 to the uh, s so transition of the cell cycle so the interaction of with p21 is such that it inhibits the pcna's role in the dna replication but not in the dna repair it in this particular stage it allow it, it causes a pause so the expression of several mediators of apoptosis such as the uh, this particular the nox a the prume the p53 bax fax and the igf br3 all of them it is transcriptly transcript uh, transcriptionally regulated directly by the p53 these targets include genes that encode for proteins uh, involved in this two apoptotic pathways that responds to the external as well as to the internal signals so, so the mitochondrial apoptotic proteins uh, the pro apoptotic proteins such as the nox uh, the nox a the puma and the p53 a1 a, aip1 that cause the release of cytochrome c and the activation of the apoptosome and activate the apoptosome are all induced also p53 tips the balance regulated by the bcl2 here it can be as we can clearly see here uh, towards apoptosis by inducing gene expression of the pro apoptotic protein bax and the two fast two fas fast receptor which is a trans uh, trans membrane receptor that uh, that receives extra cellular stimulus stimulus to stimulate apoptosis so so this is the complete how this is a typical diagram how we can show that p53 exerts many of its effects by regulating target genes as mentioned before we can hear this we will clearly see how the retinoblastoma protein and other tumor suppressor protein and uh, the transcription factor p53 they how they play the central 
tumor suppressor gene drones. As we know that CDKNA1A CDK gene codes for the P21 and this was the first uh, uh, transcriptional uh, target of P53. Its binding spectrum is very wide. It, uh, uh, yeah, a P50, a P21 forms complexes with CDK1, uh, uh, with CDK1 together with other specific cyclins, cyclins, and it shows to uh, shown to mediate a P53 induced G1 cent cycle uh, arrest. So this is very very important uh, step for many uh, during the cell cycle uh, uh, cell cycle process to control the cell growth. Its induction by uh, the P21 uh, induction by 53 and its uh, inhibition by different CDKs, it is uh, a very very important uh, crucial for the P21's uh, tumor suppressor role. So, P21 as a tumor suppressor role also governs the uh, retinoblastoma of, uh, phosphorylation. So, formation of this RBE2E2F this uh, formation of this RBE2F uh, complex depends on the form uh, phosphorylation status of the uh, retinoblastoma. So, if it is in the hypo, hypo stage or is it in the hyperphosphorylated state. So, once it is this protein P21, so this uh, formation of this RBE2EF2 complex depends on the phosphorylation status of the retinoblastoma. This protein ca carries several phosphorylation sites again for uh, so, so substrates for such as for cyclin D, cyclin uh, uh, for uh, CDK46, cyclin E, CDK, cyclin A, CDK2, cyclin B. Hypophosphorylated what will happen to the status hypophosphorylated retinoplastoma binds to the E2F transcription factors dimension dimers. So, RBE2F complexes they risk they repress they repress the transcription of numerous cell cycle genes, many of which are required for G1 to S transition. So, the, thus the hypophosphorylated state of RB can be switched to the hyperphosphorylated uh, hyperphosphorylated state by, through the kinase activities of your CDK, CDK complexes. These kinases can be inhibited by the by P21. Thus, P21 can stimulate RBE2F complex formation following uh, P53 activation and transcription of P21 CDKN1A is strongly induced as a direct target of P53. Thus, the cyclic kinase cyclin dependent kinase inhibitor of P21 then blocks activity of several cyclin CDK complexes. This results in all this hypophosphorylation of retinoblastoma which phosphors a retinoblastoma for complex formation and their binding to ETF sites and target proteins. So, many target genes are down regulated as a consequence of this indirect mechanism of Indirect P53 uh, dependent transcriptional repression. So, this is very, very important towards the how most repressed genes are involved in the cell cycle progression. Then, their so the down regulation causes a cell life cycle arrest. So, this thus this whole complete uh, interaction with the P53 pro protein products and the transcriptional uh, activation, the retinoblastoma are very, very central tumor suppressor gene functions. So, as mentioned, another gene is retinoblastoma gene that that codes for the tumor suppressor gene. So, it, it as I mentioned before, so tumor suppressor uh, genes, if they are heterozygous, they could be predisposed to retinoblastoma. But how only it, it is that a mutation, the result, uh, there should be a mutation at both uh, two uh, that inactivate both alleles of the same gene, then only the this is an active, uh, uh, there is the retinoblastoma tumor suppressor. In the in inherited form, the one, uh, the form of inactivated tumor uh, mutation is transmitted to the second germline. So, you have a normal and where this is a predisposition, one copy of the uh, tumor suppressor gene is act inactivated and here where both the two copies are 
inactivated. So, in, uh, in the sporadic form, both uh, the retinoblastic mutations are, uh, blastomic mutations are somatic. So, this retinoblastoma serves as a uh, uh, the break. So, as mentioned that this is a typical tumor suppressor gene, it, which restricts its entry into S phase by binding to, regulate, to gene regulatory proteins needed to express genes whose products are required for around the cell cycle. So, this is uh, this uh, inhibition by retinoblast uh, by Rb protein is it is relieved at the appropriate time by phosphorylation of the Rb protein which release uh, which causes it to release or to lose its inhibitory gift. So, results from the two mutations. It is very essential that it should have inactive two of both alleles else of the same gene. Then it is this inherited form of this disease. One of the inactive gene mutations is transmitted through the germ line and the second occurs through, through the somatic de de development. Tumor suppressor genes generally follow the two hit hypothesis. What does it say? Where, for example, the RB genes usually behaves as a as a normal in a healthy cells. Okay, so here shows how it becomes here in the, in the normal paternal chromosomes. So muta mutation in the RB locus in the maternal chromosome. So possible ways of uh, different there are different possible ways of eliminating the normal. Uh, RB gene. So, either it is a non disjunction chromosome loss where we can see this. So, and then or a non disjunction and a duplication or a mitotic re recombination is happening or a gene conversion is happening here, deletion and a pond mutation is, is happening. So, this is what is this two hit hypothesis says that it implies that both, uh, both alleles that code for a certain protein must be affected before the effect effect occurs. So, such that this is because if one allele for a gene is damaged, the second one can continue to still produce the correct protein. So, mutant suppressor, tumor suppressor alleles are usually recessive while mutant oncogene alleles are typically dominant. So, this is very, very important difference. So, this two hip, uh, this two hit uh, hypothesis was first proposed by the uh, scientist called Lucknudsen for which cases of uh, uh, retinoblastoma where he observed that followed, uh, they followed the second order kinetics which implies that two independent genetic events are necessary like as mentioned here before uh, with a recessive mutation which involves a sequel, uh, single uh, gene but requires biallelic mutation. So, for a, a mutant uh, event to happen. In uh, So, usually, uh, so this is in contrast oncogenic mutations are generally, uh, uh, generally involve a single allele because they are a gain of function. So, that is the dominant allele and this is a recessive allele. So, but there is an exception to this particular not all tumor uh, suppressor genes follow this two hit hypothesis. Uh, one exception is what we have discussed is before of the is like the p53 where uh, because its mutations can function as a dominant negative which means that they can prevent the function of a normal protein from the unmutated allele. So, the retinoblastoma protein as I mentioned is a byproduct of the uh, tumor uh, suppressor chain. So, uh, as we have seen, uh, it is like you have a normal healthy individual, okay. Uh, so, occasional cell uh, inactivates one of its two good RB genes. So, but still because of the two, uh, there is no tumor because you have a very one dominant functional gene. Whereas, here in the hereditary, inherited a mutant RB gene. So, as we can clear, clear, clearly see a different uh, uh, mutant. So, where you have the two occasional uh, cell inactivates, it is only uh, good uh, RB gene copy. So, you have here if where we can see, see here there is no retinoplastoma gene. So, where we can clearly see that the cell is, uh, you have a functional protein, but whereas where you have two mutations, so you can see excessive leading to a retinoblastoma. The similar uh, in case non-hereditary or in sporadic mutations, what happens here is, okay, occasional cell inactivates one of its uh, two good RB genes and here the second uh, 
uh, wherever we can see here, there is a chance that excessive progression. So here itself there where there is only one copy where it is a good, you have no tumor, where, whereas here most people with inherited mutations develop tumor and only 1 in 30 percent that is the non-inherited tree and the hereditary. So you have the normal individual even if they have an, a one allele mutation, there is no tumor, whereas in the uh, in hereditary retinoblastoma where both the alleles are they affected only, there is a resultant tumor and in the non-hereditary retinoblastoma which happens in very rare cases in 1 in 30,000 normal people develop tumor. So now slowly we will now just see how a oncoprotein of a virus can bind and inactivate this particular uh, uh, RB protein. So this is a very very important process because in certain cancers uh, such as the cervical cancer where we have the DNA viruses playing a role they could be the causative agents of uh, cancer. So the presence of this particular virus is the prelude for the, the cervical cancer. So there are three types of DNA viruses such as the semen virus, the adenovirus, the papilloma virus uh, that code for, uh, for proteins that will uh, cause the oncogenic transformation of the particular cell. So this, uh, this uh, uh, genes, uh, the genes coding for these oncoproteins do not occur in normal cellular genomes. So usually there are components of that particular uh, DNA viral genome which is and these particular particular proteins are really indispensable for a viral replication. So in adenovirus transformed cells as we can clearly see here, the oncogenic proteins are referred to as E1A and your E1B. So in SV40 cells, the, uh, there is the uh, oncogenicity is controlled by the large T antigen. In the tra papilloma transformed cells, you have the E7, E6 transformed cells. So these oncoproteins are, are the, uh, so several of these uh, oncoproteins, they will bind to this particular uh, RB protein and the P53 protein and this and they will be inactivating or derived. So, so they, they, this they will be inactivation of the RB and the P53. So this highly phosphorylated form lacks the, lacks the, they lose the characteristic growth attenuating properties of the under uh, phosphorylated form. As you can recollect, can we as we can clearly see how the hyper. Uh, uh, how the hyperphosphorylated form and we will lose the growth attenuating property. If you recollect how we have shown in the earlier diagram, how the P53 and the RB protein together, if they are hyperphosphorylated, the growth attenuating properties are lost. So, this is a classic example how so you and all this DNA viruses they cause the, they are the double standard uh, circular uh, DNA eh, eh, about they are about 8000 nucleotide pairs. So usually they cause even a benign growth or what which are normal uh, in the normal skin and uh, they are stably maintained. So viral proteins so they usually uh, require, require this particular for controlled replication of this uh, host. So sometimes if this particular uh, accidental of this viral DNA into host chromosome, so what happens? So there is unbalanced production of this viral replication proteins and the integrated gene viral replication protein happen. So the viral uh, replication, the gene integration encoding the viral replication protein happens and there is the malignant tumor. So this is how the activation, so you have the RB protein which uh, the retinoblastoma protein which binds uh, to the cell uh, proliferation factor and then there is an inactive cell proliferation factor the gene regulated protein. The P53 protein actives, activates safety break on the cell proliferation and thereby the cell proliferation is blocked. But here if we can clearly see here what happens here is the viral protein sequester the, the RB and the P53 protein such as in the typical case of a human papilloma virus during the cervical cancer. So the cell proliferation is activated by your DNA virus 
by the DNA virus and there is the active cell proliferation factor is triggered and there is continuous cell proliferation going on thereby leading to the tumor formation. So thus this viral genes are mainly the blame to blame here are the E6 and the E7 proteins. So the products of this particular viral genes which are very important they interact with the host cell proteins but in that uh, and that in a particular way to bind to this two particular very important tumor suppressor genes of the host cell putting them out of them action and permitting the cell to replicate its DNA and divide in a very uncontrolled fashion. So this diagram shows the cancer critical genes that code for components of the pathway. Here this is a typical way in the nucleus how very important some changes in gene expressions such as the P16, saccharin D, these are all the different genes here and you have the MYC here and, and the DNA uh, damage sensors that are there for the P53 and the SMANs. So whereas in the cytosol also you have very very important genes or very important genes that code for such as the E cathedral which is very very important in which which so uh, to for the metastasis so a local invasive requires a breakdown of the mechanisms uh, that normally hold the epithelial cells together so, so some of the carcinomas of the stomach and of the breast the e catheter gene has been identified as a tumor suppressor gene so the primary function of this particular e catheter protein is a cell cell edit edit addition where this protein is embedded in two adjacent plasma membranes to and enables to bind the epithelial cells together when the tumor cells lacking this particular protein this particular uh, addition molecule are placed in constriction and the uh, play the and when the functional e cadrin is put back into them they lose some of their invasive properties and begin to cohere more like normal cells loss of e cadrin may favor cancer by specifically contributing to local invasions so likewise there are other many other uh, factors here which are which have the stimulatory action and interactions and the uh, inhibitory interactions which will which will decide for the uh, whose function or the activity if this particular genes will decide for the progress of the cancer or the tumor progression. So these are the different proteins which we have already the, some of them which we have already discussed the KRAS the B, uh, they, these are all the difficult way and where they are totally uh, affecting the pathways such as the tyrosine kinase signaling pathways and there are 40 per tumors with 40 percent tumors with the KRAS mutations are seen and then beta catenin this is also very very important the p53 where we will see most of them in 60 percent of the tumors and then APC gene TGF beta and other DNA mismatch tumor suppressor genes are also seen here at the beginning of this talk we have seen that most cancers develop uh, gradually from a single aberrant cell which progresses from a benign to a malignant tumors by the accumulation of uh, many of the independent genetic accidents so we have discussed how some of these accidents are in the happening in the molecular brain uh, molecular level by by uh, saying that there is a brake failure or, or the accelerator failure or the brake failure. So now, now we will now discuss one particular class of common humor cancer more close, more uh, closely using it to illustrate and enlarge upon some of the general principles of the molecular mechanisms we have introduced and to see how we can sense the natural history of the disease in terms of uh, the action here we take colorectal cancer as an example so so where the the uh, the uh, steps of the tumor progression are taken have been followed in vivo and at the molecular level so this is the uh, so there is a loss of sex large section of certain chromosomes that uh, that those regions may harbor 
tumor suppressor gene. So, one of the very important gene uh, it which is lost is your APC uh, tumor suppressor gene. It is the inhibitory component of the WNT signaling pathway where it acts by binding to beta catenin another component of the pathway and thereby preventing a T, uh, the uh, preventing activation of the TCF4 a gene regulatory protein that stimulates growth of the colonic epithelium when it has beta catenin bound to it. Here we can see SMAT4 is also mutated in uh, main, uh, 30 percent of the colon cancers. So, this is how an APC is uh, it undergoes the colon as we can see here it undergoes colon epithelial cells undergo histological transition from a normal to a malignant state that is driven by a specific genetic events as I mentioned before in including the inactivation of the tumor suppressors such as the uh, APC SMAD the TP53 here as we can clearly see how they are all. So, at each level so in the normal from the initial transition from a normal epithelium to an aberrant cryptic foci and then from there a keras mutation from an adenoma from an early adenoma to an intermediate adenoma. So, these uh, the three stages of this adenoma represents tumors of increasing size such a and uh, dysplasia and villous condition, conditions. Thus, this is, a, this is a very typical example how the molecular mutations can affect the progression of a, a a small of a, a changes from a normal epithelium towards a carcinoma in situ, in situ and thereby invasion in metastasis. So, in this whole session, we have covered the proto-oncogenes, we have covered the complete function of the tumor suppressor genes, we have in detail went into the P53, we have play, re, seen the coordinated roles of the retinoblastoma protein as well as the P52 and then we have seen the um, a very good classic example of the RAS and the MYC and then the critical genes we have seen involved in colon cancer. Thanks a lot. Thank you.